Dude, did I hear right? You scored a goal today? Well, it was on a penalty shot, but yeah. Dude, that doesn't matter. A goal is a goal. Oh, you had no one in front of you to defend you? Now you know what it's like to be Brad Martian. Hi, kids. Victorious puppy. Huh? This team is ruining my life. Why do I want hockey? Stress relief, folks. We can oh, and oh, we will. Oh, in a game. Just letting you know ahead of time, I don't plan on talking about this game very much. I am going to talk about Easter Seals, damn it, and I'm gonna talk about this thing. By the way, it feels great to drink out of a cup as long as you drink Advil out of it the next day. Okay, I wanna talk about the Easter Seals tournament that I played in today. First, we'll talk about the Leafs. How's that? How's that? Why not? Uh, there were a few moments in this game that made me laugh in particular. Uh, the Zdeno Chara high stick on William Nylander. I, I don't even react to Bruin non-calls at this point. But Ray Ferraro on the broadcast going, oh... Bruins get away with one early here. I was just like, can we chisel that in stone? Can I tattoo Bruins got away with one on my forehead, please? Chara is literally the biggest player in NHL history with probably the longest stick in NHL history. What are you looking at? Keeping away that Chara had to sign that stick and give it to the ref after the game, but he didn't even have to reach for a pen. He just signed it in Willie's blood. There was that new helmet rule that came into effect. Charlie Coyle's helmet came off, and by came into effect, I mean nothing happened. He chipped the puck in and then just kept going. He scored the first goal. Ah, get those signed sticks, boys. Being a ref's hard, I get it. Boo, you're bad at this. It's fine that half the time I'm watching Leaf games now, I am just like lazily going boo. But it's okay though, it's okay. Jake Muzzin throws it on. Austin Matthews high sticks it. Oh, it's a high stick, it's Matthews, it's not going to count. I didn't think it was a high stick, it was close. It was real close, but I thought it should have counted. I just have no faith in anything going right for this team. The Leafs get several chances and honestly, they look great. They really do. They look great out there. Except for when they actually do get the power play. The one thing where I'm going to talk out of both sides of my mouth is complaining that the Bruins should have taken more penalties and it doesn't matter. The least power play is useless. All right, we head to the third period. It's all knotted up at once. It's an important game. We know that. It's Boston. Even on the broadcast, they're talking about, wow, a really important part of their schedule, important part of the game. I thought they were about to say most important period of the season, which, yeah, at this point, it's becoming that way. Brad Marchand scored 11 seconds in. 11. Man, that wasn't Cody Cece. I have a hard time believing that Mike Babcock told Morgan Riley, hey, just do nothing. Something is so deeply, deeply wrong at the core of the way this team thinks defense. And watching the replay back, I look and I sort of go, well, I wish Freddie would have had that, but also I think he was blindsided by how awful the play was. But it's okay because they get to play at both ends of the rink, right? Only a few minutes later, Zach Hyman fighting off like literally three guys, just being the most Zach Hyman. Digs it out, gets it to Johnny Captain, over to Kasperi Captain in wide open net, you can shoot at any time now, Cappy. Okay, he does, and he scores. It's tied. Okay, okay, they're tied 2-2. This is exactly what the Leafs have been trying to preach, right? It's tied 2-2. It's tight. It's a tough league out there. You're going to have to battle for every inch of ice. You're going to have to battle to win games. You're going to have to battle to climb the standings, and this is the type of, oh my god, the Bruins have scored already. Oh my god, it was Brad Marchand again. This turned into a goal. Like, Two seconds later, all five Leafs, I don't know what you're all doing so deep, and while you're deep, hey, maybe get the guy who's super deep. Guy was able to shoot, gobble his rebound, and read the newspaper. Are you kidding? This pair is terrible. Terrible. I don't have a joke for that. I don't have a bit. I don't have a shtick. They're awful. And different situation, but this tweet is just perfect. Jeremy Bracco isn't having a spectacular year, but I'm almost at the point where I want to call him up, give him the keys to the power play, and say fix it. And I don't mind that idea. In fact, I might even like that idea. But the problem with that idea is it involves the Leafs changing literally a single solitary thing about them. Hey, uh, RD sucks. Riley CC again. I don't think Muzzinberry again, but Dermot and Guy whose name I didn't even bother to learn. I want you to consider the possibility you might be bad at this. Try it. Slap shot, empty netter, woo, puck gets stuck, cool, let's definitely prolong this, game's done, boo. In terms of like entertainment value and effort and all that, yeah, the Leafs looked way better, uh, for sure. Uh, just the same stupid mistakes. 
same stupid mistakes. And I feel like that's almost more frustrating. We've been watching them play a lot of boring hockey lately, but I, I'm almost more frustrated watching them play 55 minutes of competent to above competent hockey, only to throw it away by just completely throwing their brain in the trash for five minute spans. Here's the tweet. When you see a calm, quiet, professional guy like Tavares breaking his stick in anger, that's when you know this is only going to get worse. I've never seen him do that. Honestly, do you see things getting any better? Do you? Uh, no. No. God, no. The mantra is it's early and the schedule's hard. Uh, so that's what they're going with. They're not going to change anything, so have fun with that. Also, Kerfoot's out. Also, looks like Moore's out. And oh my god, is Muzzin holding his hand? Please no. Anyway, have fun. Not that I'm counting, but the Sens have 11 losses and the Leafs have 12. Cool! Brad Marchand wins the Player of the Game honors and shows off the trophy because there's a Hall of Fame game trophy to the Toronto crowd before leaving the ice. Super cool. Leafs and Senators fans as both teams sit outside of a playoff spot in mid-November. Followed by the Paul Rudd meme and, and just a little aside, don't you want to just like talk to Paul Rudd? Like I'd really like to hang out with him. Oh, here's a tweet. Points percentage since January 1st. Oilers, 0.531, 30 wins in 64 games played. Leafs, 0.531, 29 wins. Ha, huh, that's less. Boo, you suck. So listen, let's go through some facts. Uh, they're bad. So, uh, there's one. Uh, number two, they're not going to do anything about it because uh, I guess they don't feel compelled uh, to make the changes. Okay, fine. So that's two. So here are your two options as a fan. Uh, you can suck it up and just wait slash hope that things get better, or you can just tune them out. <laughs> that's it. Right? Like, what else is there? They're bad, they're not gonna do anything. I think you're starting to see why I don't feel like talking about this game any longer. The Leafs haven't beaten a team of consequence in regulation since last season. Sends fans tweeting stuff, and Brad Marchand rubbing your nose in it, and tweets relating the Leafs to the Oilers. Just keep getting your head dunked in the toilet. Last one, what's up with Morgan? Did Hainsey make up for Morgan's defensive deficiencies last year, making him look like a better defenseman? Or is CeCe bringing him down this year, making him look like a worse defenseman? A combination of both. I'm sorry dude, Cody CeCe's presence and Ron Hainsey's lack of it had nothing to do, had no impact on Riley's performance during the Bruins' second goal there. I think they just might be in trouble. But hey, let's talk about something a little happier. So today was the Eric Lindros Celebrity Hockey Classic in support of Easter Seals Ontario, which I don't know if I've told you this before, is a charity that helps out kids with physical disabilities. I know I've been bugging you for, I think, almost every single video since uh, late July. I'm finally going to stop for a while, but I'm going to stop. My team is called Rachel's Raiders. Rachel is my sister, so the team is named after her. And we went out there and we tried to do something that I haven't done in the previous two years, which is win a hockey game. I was 0-6. And, and we actually went out there and won our first game. And we won our third game. We got banked in the second game, but at the end of the game, I did get a penalty shot. Now the shame is it all happened so fast. There's two videos, and none of them are very good just because they were so in the moment and people are in the way. So here's a video, get, John, John get out of the way. I, I watched you score a goal, ah, uh, well trust yeah. me it was great. I scored a goal! Now I do have an other angle. This isn't a good angle of the goal. I want you to look at Red Helmet, that's Adam Wilde, Look at his reaction and tell me he's not the best friend ever. Look at him! Look at him! He hopped! Look at him! Look at the hippie hops! The tippy taps! And I didn't have the big celly, it wasn't even good. I almost fell down, actually. I just did one of these and was sort of looking down in disbelief. When I looked up, I see Ian Tullock from Leafs Geeks just like... Ah! The whole team left the bench and mobbed me. It was great. Hey, you ever play in a hockey tournament hungover because you've been drinking out of a cup all night and then Eric Lindros comes up to you and bangs you repeatedly on the helmet with his giant ham fists? No? Just me? Honestly, I gotta say, it was pretty great. <laughs> and we had to get a picture with the Peter William Dixon Memorial Cup there for the top fundraisers. And there's some there's some familiar faces on Rachel's Raiders that you might know from the Leafs Twitter and whatnot. There's me, there's Mike Stevens, there's Adam Wilde, there's Ian Tullock, there's Jesse Blake. I'm obviously just looking at this picture and doing it in real time. Harrison Brown, 
TJ, he's not from Leafs Twitter, really. He's, he's from Adam's Morning Show, but, like, he likes hockey and stuff. Sean Fitzgerald. I don't know everyone else's Twitter. There is one friend of mine who I want to shout out in particular, not just because he helped recruit uh, several team members and not just because he helped donate a lot of money to a cause that I obviously care about a lot, so much so that I'm losing my voice. Uh, my buddy Graham Jenkins uh, had to leave the game because he wrecked his back. It was it was bad. So badly, in fact, he couldn't walk, so they had to get an ambulance. But he was in good spirits, as evidenced by what is now my favorite picture in the entire world. <laughs> he looks so happy. Lindros looks happier. Great day. So much fun playing hockey. You know, playing hockey's fun. And like, I still suck. But if you've never played, like, you can go out there and, like, it's okay to be bad at something and then eventually get better. And what's great is I've been playing for, like, the past year now, but we filmed those Mark Savard commercials in, like, last February, something like that. So everyone thinks I'm that bad. And, oh, make no mistake, I'm still bad. But, like, when that's the bar of how bad you are, you get out there and you do literally anything productive at all, they're like, wow. Ooh, also, after the goal, the chaos, I got knocked down, like, three times. Someone fished the puck out of the net, they gave it to me, and I went up to the stands, and I threw the puck to my dad, who came and watched me play hockey for the first time in my entire life today. My friends, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. You've helped raise the bar for this tournament. Rachel's Raiders raised, and by raised I mean you gave the money. This is you guys. $103,878.29. That's a number so huge I don't know how to process it. I, I really don't. Easter Seals helped my family when I was young, helped out my sister, and I, I just, I don't know how to properly articulate it. I don't know how to properly articulate how much good you've done, how much good can be done with $104,000. So if you donated a bajillion dollars or five or two or one or whatever, or if you didn't donate, but you were just liking and retweeting and everything and just getting the word out, have a sip, you're on this team too. I wanna do a day with the cup I really, I really want to do a day with the cup. You don't understand. Since last year, like when I got close to being the top fundraiser, I was like, no, I want this cup. I, I want to win. Striving for something for a year and achieving it is extremely gratifying, and I only have you to thank for that. And you know what's more gratifying? Raising over a hundred grand for a kid's charity, guys. Like, holy smokes, your gems. I want to give a shout out to two particular people uh, because they were just so above and beyond. Nick Gould was making all kinds of generous donations to the team, but they were funny amounts of money, so we looked into it and we're like, oh, it's exactly $8,000. We contact him, he tells me his favorite player is Matt Sundin. I go, what? And during the theater event a few weeks ago, he donated $5,000 on top of it. And then, and then, I received this in the mail. What is this? Who was my favorite player growing up? That's right. <gasps> and it's, you don't understand, this is like the best moment of my life. Nick, as if he hadn't done enough, uh, decided to get me this autographed Felix Botvin mask as a, <laughs> as a, I don't even know. I've talked about this on the podcast before. Oh my God, look at how good this looks. I've talked about this on the podcast before. Uh, Felix Botvin mask of any kind, let alone signed, would be the crown jewel of my memorabilia collection. It's a hard word to say, I'm really tired. Uh, at this point, like, it's almost like he's ruined hockey memorabilia for me. I know I'll never top this. Unless, like, I literally get to take home the Stanley Cup. Oh, wait. And I need to give a shout out to a, just a saint on earth, Mike Schmidt. This guy uh, left me flabbergasted last year. On the day of the tournament, he donated $10,000 in one fell swoop. This year, he's made it 20 as part of matching donations uh, for the theater event and it's not like he was just matching anyone 
uh, 5,000 of the money that he was matching was from his mom. The whole Schmidt family donated something between $25,000, dollars And even more than that, Mike came to the Scotiabank Theater with me. He helped figure out all the logistics, because I don't know what I'm doing, uh, with the theater to get that show on the road. He literally ran the stream, if you saw, at the event. Just the best, and this event does not happen without him. Mike, if you're watching, buddy, thank you. And last but not least, man, you know, and last but not least, 13 grand, 20 grand, whatever it is, what made Rachel's Raiders so strong was across all the players on our team, I think we had about a thousand donors to the team. So that's thousands, 500, 100, 50, 20, 10, five, a dollar. I'm really grateful you're part of my life and I'm really grateful for what you've done to help these kids' lives. Thank you. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching and for everything. Click like if you like this video, click subscribe. If you really liked it, tell all your friends that I'm not gonna harass them asking for donations for Easter seals anymore. So now I can get back to promoting my book. This team is ruining my life. Is it the Christmas season? I think it's the Christmas season. It makes the perfect Christmas gift, but uh, for real, uh, this ugly slice of hair on my face is for Movember. So, uh, like, if you feel like you want to make a donation, I know, I know. How could I possibly ask you after all these months? Just a, a, two more weeks, please. It'll all be over soon. Trust me, my wife is counting down the days.